welcome to the Melody Dolman Workshop preliminary video. This is a heads up on how this workshop will be run, plus give you a little bit of information about how to choose your size and a couple of easy pattern adjustments that you can do before you even begin. And those will be how to blend sizes and how to do any length adjustments. Real simple stuff that you guys can do on your own before we even start with our mitten garment. So the purpose of these workshops is to give you the skills and encouragement and support to sew up your own Melody Dolman. In the workshop, my recommendation is to use a fabric that you don't love, but maybe it can be a wearable muslin. So then once you have gotten the techniques down and we can get the fit, you know, real tuned in to your body, then you can use the skills that you just learned and make um, a final Melody on your own. So that's the goal of the Melody Dolman workshop. Now let's talk about sizing. As with most Love Notions patterns, I recommend choosing your size based on high bust. The high bust is measured under your arms all the way around. And then measure your full bust, which is the fullest part of your bust level all the way around. So choose your size by the high bust. And if your full bust minus the high bust is four inches or more, I recommend using the full bust piece. And that is a special piece that's just a front piece that's already had a full bust adjustment done to it. So I'm doing a little bit of the work for you, hopefully. So if you need a full bust piece, it is available for you. Otherwise, go with your high bust and you should be good. And then if you have a, like a larger hip size, um, I'm gonna show you how you can blend the sizes out to get a good fit of the hips. So the Melody Dolman is an easy fitting Dolman style top where the sleeves are all one piece and you should have plenty of ease at the bust the waist, and the hips. So you can wear this dolman two ways. You can wear it, um, it's kind of hard to see here, but I have this uh, just straight untied, but you can also undo those last two buttons and tie it up for a cute little tied waist. As with all patterns, fabric makes such a difference and the Melody Dolman is no different. How the dolman fits will depend a lot on your fabric and this pattern can be made in several different kinds of fabrics. I do suggest using a woven fabric and personally some drape always looks real nice. This one I'm making, I have on right now is made with like a tinsel denim, like a lightweight denim that has some tinsel in it, which gives it a really nice drape and it feels really nice. But you could also use quilter's cotton. This turquoise one I have over here, that's made with a quilter's cotton and it, it, it fits a little bit more close, but it still looks great. You can also use a rayon or um, shirting, a crepe, any, any, basically any woven fabric will work. I'll say though that the rayon fabrics are, can be a little harder to work with because they tend to unravel and they tend to grow. So if you're between sizes and you choose a size down, that's great, that's what I would recommend for most fabrics. But if you're between sizes and you're planning on using something like a quilter's cotton, you may consider sizing up because the quilter's cotton doesn't give you the drape and it might fit a little close. So take that into consideration. Other supplies you'll need to make the Melody Dolman, besides the, you know, the general thread, sewing machine, um, iron, a fabric marker to transfer markings, you also need some fusible interfacing. Um, I recommend the Pellon SF 101, or actually what I really like is this interfacing from fashionsewingsupplies.com. Um, I use their Pro Sheer Elegance and a medium weight for this, but they have a, a huge variety of their custom made interfacings and I've loved all of them. So if you are in the market for some interfacings, I would highly suggest checking out fashionsewingsupplies.com. Otherwise go to Joann's or Wellback or even Amazon and get their uh, Pellon fusible interfacing. You'll also need some buttons. Um, I like to use the, the half inch buttons, but you can go a little bit larger if you like. Um, you'll need five of those, or if you want to add more buttons than what I have in the pattern, that's totally fine too. You can do that. So just keep that in mind. Now I want to quickly cover any the simple grading or blending sizes pattern adjustments. So if you have measured yourself and you see that your hips, for example, are larger than your high bust, the size that your high bust would put you in, I still suggest using your size by your high bust and then blending out to the hip size that would accommodate you. So I'm gonna show you how to do that now. Uh, um, for example, I'm gonna say if your high bust puts you in a size medium, but your hips put you in a size extra large, I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So this is the front. This adjustment will be performed on the front and the back. 
So all we're gonna do is take a ruler and some kind of marker, and we're gonna start. The bust line is just right under the arm, the end of the arm side, because this is a dolman style, so the sleeve drops down to be able to accommodate movement. And we're going to start right here, just underneath the arm's eye, and then we're gonna go out to the extra large hip, which is down here. So pretty simple. We're just gonna make a gradual line from the medium bust area down here to the large hip. I mentioned before, whatever you do to the front, you need to do the back because the pattern pieces need to match up. So you would also do this exact same thing to the back piece. Okay, let's talk about those length adjustments. Um, if you know you're also going to be blending out to a larger size hip, for example, or waist, um, go ahead and do your length adjustment first, but keep that in mind when you're cutting your pattern piece out and cut your pattern piece out to the largest size that you'll be blending out to. For example, if we're going from a medium to an extra large, cut out the extra large. All right, so I've got my pattern piece right here. I'm just gonna work on the back, but the same process will apply to the front. And so we have this length and shorten line here. I'm gonna cut across. I'll first show you how you would shorten the pattern. And first of all, you need to measure yourself. This is the, the easiest, quickest way to do it. Uh, so this is the back piece. I would measure the pattern from the center back all the way down to the hem, and then measure yourself at your center back, which would be like the bone at the back of your neck, all the way to where you want your hem to hit. So if you find that you your body measurement where you want it to hit is like an inch shorter than the pattern, then you take an inch out of the pattern. So to do that, if I'm just gonna work with an inch, I'm gonna draw, a, I'm gonna measure from this length and shorten line one inch up and just draw a line across. Here, let me do that a little darker so you can see it. Okay. So now I know I need to move my pattern piece up one inch to hit that line and that will remove an inch from the length. Now you'll see you'll have a little bit of a jog over here. That's fine, just smooth that out. Just take your ruler and smooth that jog out and you're good to go. Now just remember, whatever you're doing to one piece, the front or the back, you need to do it to the opposing side. So make the exact same adjustment to the other piece if you're working with back or front. They both need to be done. All right, now we'll talk about lengthening. So like before, if you measure yourself and in the pattern piece and you see that the pattern is maybe like an inch or however much, a little shorter than what you prefer, same process is gonna apply, we're just gonna do it the opposite. And you'll need an, a scrap of paper or I like to using Swedish tracing paper, so that's what I'll show you with. Uh, Cause you're gonna put this underneath your pattern piece because you're gonna be opening up the pattern, adding more to it. So I'm just gonna cut off the piece here. And so we've cut on the length and short line. I'm gonna lay my Swedish tracing paper down and put my pattern pieces on top. And then uh, I'm going to take one side in place, keep it steady. And then I will measure an inch down from our length and short line. Now I know I need to move my bottom piece up to match that line. And we wanna make sure that our center back or center front, whichever, is lined up because you want your grain lines to stay you know, on grain. So I'm just gonna tape that in place. And then I've got to make sure my side seams are a smooth line and it looks like it will be, so I'm just gonna draw that in there and do the same for the center back. And then there is the new piece. Okay. So those are the two easy adjustments I'm covering in this preliminary video, how to blend sizes and how to lengthen and shorten. If you need more pattern adjustments, I highly suggest going through the workshop with us, sewing it up, trying it on, and then we'll work together on the other pattern adjustments that you might need. But these two general ones should get you a good start. So I'm really looking forward to working with you on the Melody Dolmet and I will see you here for our first class.
Okay, we're starting off with step one and we're going to iron fusible interfacing uh, at the center front marking that's marked on the pattern. As you can see, um, there's this dotted rectangle box and that's where you're supposed to put your interfacing. Now, depending on your fabric type, you may not have to put interfacing on both sides. I'm using this um, tinsel denim, so I don't need interfacing on both sides. I'm just gonna put it on the side that the buttonholes go on, which traditionally, uh, buttonholes go on the wearer's right. So that's what I'm doing. I've transferred um, the outermost marking on that um, interfacing line. I just folded it over and lined up and drew my line there. And now I'm gonna take my strip of interfacing. The interfacing I'm using is um, from Fashion Sewing Supplies. I really like their interfacing. This is their Pro Sheer Elegance Medium um, Fusible Interfacing. I use this because this is not a lightweight, but it's also not a heavyweight. It's definitely a medium weight fabric, and um, it's just a good quality interfacing. So if you're looking for interfacing, they've got a lot of variety. They also have a good uh, Trico interfacing, which is great for knits. So I'm just going to line up my strip of interfacing here at the line I transferred and give that a good press. Now, if you're using a, like a lightweight fabric, um, something loosely woven, especially something like a rayon, you definitely wanna put this interfacing on both the right and the left. All right, I've got that ironed on. Now I'm gonna take this to my serger and I'm gonna finish the raw edges on both sides of the uh, this line right here. Continuing step one, um, I took this to the serger and I just finished those raw edges of the center front. Uh, if you don't have a serger, you can use an overcast stitch or um, you could do a, like a really narrow hem, uh, that would be fine. Uh, now we're going to fold over these shoulders a half inch to the wrong side. Sure, I've got a half inch here. Okay, moving on to step two, we're going to mark the center back if you haven't already. And we're going to align the front to back at the shoulder seams with right sides together. Um, hopefully you can tell on this fabric that the darker side is the right side and this lighter side is the wrong side. We're just gonna match those up at the shoulders. I'm gonna clip them in place. Now I'm going to take this to my serger and I'm using the 3 8 seam allowance, I'm going to stitch these shoulder seams. If you don't have a serger, you can use an over, uh, you can straight stitch and then use an overcast stitch or straight stitch and then pink the seam so they don't ravel. I'm going to stay stitch all around the neckline and we're going to use a stay stitch. A stay stitch is different than a basting stitch. A stay stitch is a regular length stitch length, whereas a basting stitch is a longer stitch length. So we're going to do that because this area here is cut on the bias and like bias sometimes can tend to stretch and we don't want that because we have a collar that we need to attach and it needs to fit exact. So that stay stitching will keep any distorting from happening. Now we're moving on to working with the collar. You're gonna make sure that you have transferred all your pattern markings to your collar pieces. You should have two uh, main collar pieces of your fashion fabric and then also um, an interfacing, a fusible interfacing collar. I do wanna note one thing. 
try to cut your collar one layer at a time. I made the mistake of cutting this piece um, double layered like you normally do. If you, hopefully you can tell from here, but I can tell this piece was on the bottom layer because I can tell that it's off grain. You can kind of see the grain is kind of skewed a little bit, but the top one isn't. <laughs> so this is my mistake. Try to cut your collar, especially if you're using a shifty fabric like this, um, in one layer at a time, that will help. I'm gonna use this one that's kind of skewed on the bottom so we won't see it. So just a little tip there, cut your collars one layer at a time. All right, so after you've transferred your markings, you're going to fuse your interfacing to the under collar, which is this one right here, the one that I was just telling you about how the grain is skewed. So that will also help shape it up a little bit. So we're ironing the interfacing to the wrong side of the under collar. So if you happen to be using a different fabric, whichever one you want to show is the upper collar, and the one that you don't want to show is the under collar. All right, continuing on, so we're going to do with this step, we're gonna cut into the upper collar a half inch at the T markings, which were, so we had the center, center marking and then you have the T markings on either side. So you can see that there, and there's the pattern piece. So we have center back, and then we have our two T markings. So I've got this facing toward me so I can see. And we're gonna cut these markings a half inch. Okay. And now we're gonna press the flap to the wrong side. So cutting at those markings made this flap of fabric. So now we're going to press this flap to the wrong side. Just make sure you keep it a half inch width or depth the whole way. So now we're gonna sew our collar pieces together. So we have our under collar that's interfaced and we're going to align our upper collar, the one we just cut the flap on, right sides together. So we've aligned our collar pieces right sides together. And now we're going to stitch using our 3 8 seam allowance and we're going to stitch from the end of one side seam all the way around the back down to the other. The collar is all stitched together. We're going to grade the seam allowances. So we're going to trim the under collar. This is the piece that has it interfacing. We're going to trim it to an eighth of an inch and then we're going to trim the one, the collar that doesn't have it interfacing to a quarter inch. So I'm using these duckbill scissors and this kind of protects this bill right here, kind of protects the layer underneath so I don't inadvertently cut something I'm not supposed to. So I'm, that eighth of an inch is cutting close to the stitching line, but don't get too close, especially if you're working with something like a rayon that tends to fray because rayon really needs that extra little bit of width. I made a melody that turned out so pretty in this really expensive rayon, but I cut too close when I was graying my seam allowances. And even though it was stitched, it began to fray and pull apart. So it's kind of a bummer. Okay, now I'm going to grade the other seam allowance to about half of what it is right now. And this just reduces the bulk in that collar area and it just makes the collar lay nicely and just gives a nice finish to it. And it makes the um, under collar stay to the inside so you shouldn't see it poking out. All 
right now I'm going to turn the collar right side out and give it a good press. When I turn my collar right side out, you can either use like a, a bone folder or a point turner. So that's what this tool looks like. It will help you get crisp corners. The other thing you can do if you don't have something like this, or you can use a chopstick, that's also a good option, is I like to put my thumb inside the corner and fold down the two seam allowances there and kind of wrap them around my thumb and pull it through. And that usually will give me a nice corner without having to use any extra tools. Although I do think I'm gonna poke that out a little bit. There we go. Gives you a nice corner there. You should be careful that you don't poke through the fabric. All right, so now I'm going to press this making sure that that under collar that's interfaced is rolling towards the back or underneath here. All right, we've got our collar all finished. Now I'm gonna take this to my machine and top stitch. Um, this is an optional step. Depending on your fabric, you may not want to top stitch. Some fabrics, it won't look as nice. Some fabrics, it looks great. So that's totally a personal preference.